So you've been asked to generate some stand and stock tables to process some inventory data that you've collected. Before we review how to do that, let's take a look in our textbook by Avery and Burkhart and see what they have to say. Here on page 205, Avery and Burkhart give a summary of stand and stock tables in an example in table 9.1. Looking at the table, the primary organization, is that we have summaries or data by diameter class. And we can also see two attributes given. On the left, we have number of trees. We've, that's been broken down into both the track total and per acre averages. The per acre average is what I tend to think of as a stand table. This gives us an idea of the distribution of our trees on the site by their size class. On the right we have cubic foot volumes. This could just as well be basal area and is what I typically think of as a stock table. Again the track total is given as well as per acre averages. Okay, you're back from the field and you've entered all of your field data into Excel and here is the data set from your timber cruise. In the data set you can see we've got an individual plot identifier, a tree identifier which is the tree number within the plot, a species code and a DBH recorded to the nearest inch. Now before we can generate a stand or a stock table we know we need to assign each one of these trees to a DBH class. To do that we're going to use a formula that I showed you earlier in the semester. We'll enter that formula. It's just equal to diameter class width times this the results of this int function, which is an integer function that truncates the decimal places. We're going to have the dbh and we're going to add the diameter class width divided by 2 to that and divide the whole thing by 2. And you can see that puts the 9.4 inch tree into the 10 inch class. By clicking the, the, the little square on the right hand corner, that just copies the formula down. Now we've got dbh class for each tree. Before we can generate the stand and stock tables, we need to enter the correct expansion factors for the two attributes of interest. Those are trees per acre and basal area per acre. Now these data were collected using a basal area factor 10 square feet per acre variable radius plot inventory. If you remember from earlier in the class, that means that the expansion factor for BA is a constant for each tree. Each tree contributes 10 square feet per acre towards plot level totals. The expansion factor for trees per acre is a variable that depends on both the basal area factor on your inventory and the diameter of the tree. If you remember that formula, it's just the BAF divided by the basal area of the tree. How do you calculate BA of a tree again quickly? Remember it's 0.005454, and that's a number you should memorize, times the dbh of that tree squared. There's our expansion factor in terms of trees per acre, meaning tree 1 contributes 20.8 roughly trees per acre to the plot level total. I need to copy the formulas down so I have the values for each tree, but you can see that Excel has automatically incremented the value for BA when it really needs to be a constant. So I'm just overrode that and changed the formatting for TPA so that it's easier to see. I think I have almost everything I need before before I can start generating my stand table, but one thing I do want to do is count the number of plots. You can see there are 22 plots in total. Now to generate the stand table, I'm going to use the pivot table wizard. Pivot tables are really powerful ways to generate rapid cross tabulations of your data. In order to generate the stand table, I need to include in my pivot table the DBH class labels, the things I'm going to generate the summaries by. And then I need to generate the summary using the expansion factor for TPA. I'll just move it over here to the sum values field. And note by default, the pivot table wizard has set that to a count. What I really want is that to be a sum. So let's change the value field setting to sum. And before we hit OK, let's change the number format to one decimal place again so the pivot table doesn't look kind of silly. Make this a little easier to see. I'll just zoom it to a little bit bigger magnification. Does this look like a pivot, to, uh, like a stand table? It doesn't because this is just a sum. To calculate the mean, we need to divide each one of these totals by the total number of plots, which we counted earlier. We know there are 22 plots, so we'll divide each number by 22, and there's our stand table. Again, I'm just going to change these uh, to be number format and reduce the number of decimal places so it's a little easier to see.